بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم today we're going to look at just one verse and this is a verse we read today and there's a similar verse that was read recited tonight this is surah an-nisa verse 86 allah azza wa jalla says wa idha huyyit wa idha huyyitum bi tahiyyatin فَحَيُّوا بِأَحْسَنَ مِنْهَا أَوْ رُدُّوهَا إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ حَسِيبًا Allah says when you are greeted with a salutation, بِتَحِيَّةٍ any salutation, فَرُدُّوهَا return that salutation um, بِأَحْسَنَ مِنْهَا أَوْ رُدُّوهَا return it with a better salutation or the like thereof. And Allah is ever watchful over you. He takes account over you. This is a very important verse that speaks about an important habit in human societies and that is the idea of greeting one another. Greeting one another is a universal norm in every culture, every society, every, every civilization, part of adab, part of courtesy. And tahiyya means basically when you meet someone, it's a form of dua, a supplication, so to speak. So you extend a good dua to someone when you meet them either for life or so on and so there are various expressions cultures use uh, when you say good morning in america it doesn't mean it is a good morning it means may you have a good morning it's kind of like a dua it's a shorthand for a supplication and it doesn't have a bad meaning good evening so and all these other there are other forms of expressions in human society um, so allah generally uh, endorses the idea of uh, greetings here But specifically, this is speaking about, we know, we well know that Allah gifted us with a special type of greeting. And our faith, our civilization has been gifted by the greeting known as Salaam. And it's such a wonderful expression, so comprehensive and it's so beautiful and profound that this became the symbol of, 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 of Islam, of the Muslim people and Muslim culture. So, you know, In this verse, Allah commands us, when you are greeted uh, by anyone, return the same or better. This is a good adab. And the implication of this verse is that it is praiseworthy to be initiate greet- greetings as well. Although Allah is not speaking about initiating greeting, but it's understood. If someone greets you, Allah says, give them ahsan, what is better. So it goes to follow that the greeting itself is hasan, is something praiseworthy. So... Um, Allah commanded us to greet one another in various ways and forms. He says in Surah Nur, verse 61, for instance, فَإِذَا دَخَلْتُمْ بُيُوتًا فَسَلِّمُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِكُمْ تَحِيَّةً مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ مُبَارَكَةً طَيِّبًا This is a very beautiful verse. Allah says, when you enter homes, this could be your own homes or it could be the homes of <clears throat> your relatives, your friends. إِذَا دَخَلْتُمْ بُيُوتًا فَسَلِّمُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِكُمْ Then greet or um, salim in Arabic is shorthand for say as-salam or say, extend the greeting of peace. And we'll look at how that is done in various forms. But salimu ala anfusikum and then Allah describes this greeting as how? Tahiyyatan min indillah. A greeting that comes from Allah. And mubarakatan tayyiba. Allah describes it as a greeting that's full of blessing, mubarak. And a greeting that's tayyib, is pure, is beautiful, is something that's Uh, very um, good. It's a, a praiseworthy quality. So this is an instruction about entering homes. Allah says, or Allah commands the Prophet وسلم, and us by extension in another verse, Surah Al-An'am, verse 54, وَإِذَا جَاءَكَ الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِآيَاتِنَا O Messenger of Allah, when they come to you, who's they? Those who believe in our signs. When the believers come to you, فَقُلْ Say to them, سَلَامٌ عَلَيْكُمْ Here Allah commands the Messenger of Allah sallallahu when these people come to you, say to them, سَلَامٌ عَلَيْكُمْ And then, كَتَبَ رَبُّكُمْ عَلَىٰ نَفْسِهِ الرَّحْمَةِ And inform them that Allah has written for Himself mercy. Mercy is His master principle. It's one of His guiding principles. كَتَبَ رَبُّكُمْ عَلَىٰ نَفْسِهِ الرَّحْمَةِ أَنَّهُ مَنْ عَمِلَ مِنْكُمْ سُوءًا بِجَهَالَةٍ ثُمَّ تَابَ مِنْ بَعْدِهِ وَأَصْلَحْ فَأَنَّهُ غَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ So this verse is speaking about the Muslims, the believers that would come to the Messenger of Allah and they were full of sins. 
Some of them had committed all sorts of sins. And now they're coming as believers. Allah is reminding the messenger, look, when they come to you, say salamun alaykum. Don't judge them. Don't look at their past. Don't look at their deeds. Say salamun alaykum and remind them Allah is full of mercy. He has mandated or written mercy for himself. And then remind them that any one of you commits a evil or a sin uh, out of ignorance and then sincerely repents and then makes amends. Wa aslah. They should know that Allah is Ghafur Rahim. And we know that this command of Tahiyyah, this, this special greeting, Salamun Alaikum, that's one of the forms, it extends back to the time of Adam. There's an important hadith uh, in Bukhari and Muslim where the famous hadith where Allah created Adam. Allah created Adam in his form, and uh, Allah commanded Adam the following. He, he said to him, Fasallim. So Allah commanded after he created Adam, breathe in him his spirit. He said, oh Adam, go to that group of angels that are sitting down and greet them. And then he says, And listen to how they will respond to you. Uh, why? Because this will be your greeting and the greeting of your progeny, Bani Adam. So, Adam alayhi salam, he went to the angels. And what did he say? He said, As-salamu alaykum. Aqala as-salamu alaykum. Peace be upon you. And then the, what did the angels say in response? Faqalu as-salamu alayka wa rahmatullah. So they added one more word, the mercy of Allah. They said, As-salamu alayka, in the singular, may peace be upon you as well as the mercy of Allah. So this is an important instruction. Tahiyya, this greeting of salam is so central to our deen, um, comes from Adam, is commanded in the Quran to the believers. It was part of the prophetic mission. In fact, we know when the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam arrived in Medina at that critical juncture, and he said those first words. What were the very first words? It's so amazing. The first words that came out of his mouth when he arrived in Medina as a messenger, when he made the hijrah. This is an important moment. He's arriving to a land he's never... Uh, lived there before and they're accepting him as a messenger not everyone's Muslim there are all sorts of people looking at him many of them on the fence many of them have no intention of being Muslim but there are Muslim and non-Muslim in the audience we know the story from one of the rabbis Abdullah ibn Salam who says I was one of those who was waiting to see who this person would be and when he came there was a commotion I came out with the crowd and I saw the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, at that time he was Jewish, of the Jewish faith. And he said the fir first thing I noticed from his face that it was a noble face and that this could not be the face of a liar. And then he said the first words he said to the people, Ayyuhan Nas, O human beings, O people, Afshus Salam, spread peace amongst yourselves. Afshus Salam means spread peace is a general meaning, but specifically it means it's greeting. How do you spread peace among each other? By saying it to each other. Assalamu alaikum. Afshu salam. Wa atarimu ta'am. Feed each other. Wasilu al arham. Maintain the family ties. Wa sallu bil layli wa nasu niyam. Pray during the night while the rest of the people are asleep. Tadkhulu al jannata bi salam. And you shall enter paradise in peace. This is a summary of the mission of Islam. So imagine this is the first thing that the Prophet wasallam says in Medina. This would be a great summary of the deen. And the very first thing is Afshu Salam. That's how important it was. And these words had an effect on Abdullah ibn Salam and eventually he became, uh, he embraced Islam uh, based upon this experience that he had with the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet also said an important hadith. He said, وَالَّذِي نَفْسِي بِيَدِي لَا تَدْخُلُ الْجَنَّةَ حَتَّى تُؤْمِنُ He said, I swear by the one in whose hand is my soul, None of you will enter paradise until you have faith, Iman. And he said, وَلَا تُؤْمِنُوا حَتَّى تَحَابُوا And none of you will really have full faith until you love one another. This is a beautiful teaching. You know, to enter paradise, you need to have Iman. And you can never have full Iman until you love one another. And he's speaking to the believers. And then he says, أَفَلَا أَدُلُّكُمْ عَلَىٰ شَيْءٍ إِذَا فَعَلْتُمُوهُ تَحَابَبْتُمْ Shall I tell you something? If you do it, it will increase the love between you. And he said, um, what did he say after that? He said, Afshu salama baynakum. Spread peace amongst yourselves. 
which is the greeting of peace, uh, primarily. This is an important instruction. Um, Allah Azza wa Jal in the Quran, He repeats His greeting throughout the Quran. So Allah, He extends His greeting from Himself to the messengers, for instance. So He says, for instance, about Yahya alayhi salam, Allah is speaking. وَسَلَامٌ عَلَيْهِ يَوْمَ وُلِدَ وَيَوْمَ يَمُوتُ وَيَوْمَ يُبْعَثُ حَيَّةٌ Allah says, Salam, or peace upon him, Yahya, the Prophet Yahya, the day he was born, the day he will die, and the day he will be raised up uh, again. Uh, Allah says, وَسَلَامٌ عَلَىٰ عِبَادِهِ الَّذِينَ اصْطَفَىٰ Salam on the servants who Allah chose, speaking about the messengers. And there's so many specific statements Salam ala Nuhin fil alameen. Allah says Salam on Nuh. Allah says Salam ala Ibrahim. Salam upon Ibrahim. Allah says Salam ala al Mursaleen. Allah says Salam ala Musa wa Harun. So Allah extends His Salam, His greeting, His prayer for peace. And it's not a prayer from Him, it's a statement from Him uh, upon the messengers. So this is one form of finding this greeting through, scattered throughout the Quran. There's another. Um, example of this greeting in the Quran which comes from the angels and or it comes from the prophets rather angels also will first let's look at the prophets various prophets they said the same greeting so Allah says for instance about Ibrahim alayhi salam when his guests came to him on various occasions but on that specific occasion qala salaman he said to them what salam so Allah says also about Isa alayhi salam Isa said about himself he extended salam upon himself. He said, Wasalamu alayya yawma wulitu wa yawma amutu wa yawma uba'athu hayya. Salam upon myself, the day I was born, the day I will die, and the day I will be raised up. Um, so Allah Azza wa Jalla shares examples of the Prophet saying salam. And finally, the angels. There are so many examples in the Quran about the angels giving salam. Um, Allah says, Walaqad ja'at rusuluna Ibrahim bil bushra. Allah says, when the angel, the messengers came to Ibrahim with the good tidings of a child, what did they say? Qalu salama. The first thing they said to Ibrahim was salam. And he also responded with salam. So there's so many beautiful examples um, where the angels are saying salam. Allah says, when they pass away, the believers, the good angels come to them, they say, Salamun alaikum, peace be upon you. This is after the believers die. So salam is also finally the greeting of the people of Jannah. So beautiful that this is not just a custom in this life, but this tradition, this norm, this adab will extend to the next life. So Allah says in a beautiful verse, Inna ladina aman wa amilu salihati yahdihim rabbuhum bi imanihim. Allah says those who believe uh, have iman and those who uh, did good works, Allah guides him. Their Lord will guide guide them through their iman. Tajri min yahdihim rabbuhum bi imanihim. Tajri min tahtihimul anharu fi jannatin naim. They will be admitted into jannatin naim, gardens of pleasure, underneath which rivers flow. Da'wahum fiha. And then Allah says, what will be their da'wah? Da'wah means their way of speaking. What will their style be? What will they be saying to one another? So when these believers enter paradise, da'wahum fiha, subhanakallahumma, wa tahiyyatuhum fiha, salam. Allah says their uh, frequent speech will be subhanakallah, subhanakallahumma. All these adhkar that we used to do in this life, they're going to continue in the next life. So this is an important um, verse that tells us what will our life be as believers in, in paradise? It'll be very similar. We'll be we'll be making athkar. We'll be saying subhanallah. We will be saying all the du'as that we used to make here, uh, perhaps in a slightly different form. But the hiyatuhum fi Allah said the greeting in paradise among the inhabitants of paradise will be salam. So the exact same greeting. So this is so beautiful when you look in the Quran. When you look in the Quran, there are four ways or external forms of this greeting, four ways of saying. Sometimes Allah says salamun, or he quotes salamun. That's one way of extending this greeting. So you can say salam. You know, sometimes we write emails and we WhatsApp salam, right? We just put salam. That's Quranic. That's perfectly fine. And then sometimes Allah shares the greeting salaman in the Quran. 
So salamun and salaman. So if you uh, salamun, the shorthand by dropping the vowel will be salam. And salaman, which is the accusative form, when you shorthand that, salama. You can also say salama. And then another form is salamun alaykum. It's throughout the Quran. You have the salamun alaykum. This is one way of saying the salam. And then finally, you have the common way that most people are familiar with, assalamu alaikum. So these are all different types of greetings of one and the same. They're all extended as prayer of peace. And salam is such a powerful, comprehensive expression. It includes everything good. It includes peace, includes uh, safety from harm. It includes security, it includes the protection of Allah, and it includes a general... Um, you know, idea of peace and happiness. So this is very, very important. Now, sharing those forms, just a final few things to say, and then we'll end, and then perhaps we can take questions. Um, you know, there is a form where you say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. So there is a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu where a man came and greeted him and said, Assalamu alaikum. It's a medium tier Sahih hadith. It's not the strongest hadith, but it's still Sahih. Uh, it comes in the Sunan of Imam at Tirmidhi. So the Prophet, when someone said Salam, he responded the same, and the Prophet said 10. Another man came and said, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, and the Prophet said 20. He gets 20 rewards. And then another person came and Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, and the Prophet وسلم, said 30. So this is where we learn that you can add to the Salam, you can make a very short Salam. You can say salamun alaikum, and you can add to that uh, wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So this is just add to the blessing of salam. So this is very, very important. Um, so there's this flexibility. That's the theme here, the, the idea here. There's this flexibility of extending greetings to one another. Now, you shouldn't hold people to greet. There, there are also common sense guidelines that people sometimes forget. If you come in, someone is busy, you know, or reciting Quran, you know, and you say assalam because the problem by extending a greeting, the extending the greeting is a very good norm in sunnah. But when someone hears a greeting, it becomes farad or wajib upon him to respond according to this verse, right? So you put a person in a position where he has to respond. So people are praying, people are reciting Quran, they're busy. So you need to have common sense. And also this idea of long salam. There are people that overdo it. They say so many words in the salam or every single there. I have friends every time they call, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And then they add stuff to it. And every time those people call, I just have to pause. Okay, here we go. So you have to give it some time. Now, you know, there are, there are hadith people share that companions used to walk in the streets and they would say salam to one another and they pass through a tree, they would say salam again. You know, those are mubalagat. Right? Those are virtues. That's a good thing, but it's not the norm. If you start doing that in society, it makes things very difficult. Especially people who are busy, especially people who, you know, are doing many, many things. You see someone in the street and you just stop them and you say a long salam. Now they're obligated to respond. According to one interpretation, whatever salam you get, you have to respond likewise. So then they have to say the same. So, you know, this is this is not necessarily a good practice, right? So, you know, Sufyan al for instance, a man came to him and said, As-salamu alayka ya Aba Abdullah wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So he said this long salam. And then he said, Kaifa and Kaifa halu. So it's long greeting. And Sufyan al Thawri is a great scholar. He doesn't have time for a lot of you know, long talk. So he said to him, Afan Allahu wa iyak lasna ashab tatwilin. He said, May Allah forgive you. You know, we don't care for long speech. So this is all, this can also be a negative thing. Just keep that in mind. Um, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, a man came to him from Yemen, he was blind. And he said, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. And then, thumma zada shay'an ma'adhalik. He added even more to that. And then he just asked, Who is this man? Because he hadn't seen him before. And someone said he's visiting. And then he said to him, This hadith in the Muatta of Imam Malik. So he said to him, um, After that, look, Inna salama intaha ila al barakah. Salam ends at wa barakatuhu. No need to go beyond that because then it might even be a negative thing. So just keep these things in mind. Um, so it's a beautiful custom and there's a lot of common sense that's called when we practice this custom and it's something flexible. So if you hear someone say salam or you do various expressions and also 
other than it's, this is the best expression, but tahiyya in general is a good thing. Our Mawlana Islahi, Rahimahullah uh, Ta'ala, when we used to leave, what, what, how would he, like, what was his parting greeting often? What did he used to say? Like in the beginning, it was always Assalamu Alaikum, but when he left or when he hung up the telephone call, in the end, he would say what? Allah Hafiz. Right? So there's nothing wrong with saying any type of greeting that's beautiful, Allah Hafiz. In our country, we say Khuda Hafiz also. You know, these are not necessarily bad. They're good greetings. Um, but just keep these things in mind. We need to have beautiful customs and greeting each other. And this all comes from the Quran. Uh, Wallahu ta'ala a'lam. So with that, if there's any questions. Yeah, so according to this verse, it's a general verse. Um, when you enter a house, say salam upon yourselves. So the word Allah uses yourselves. Yourselves means your family, but it also could be yourself alone. So that's a good sunnah and habit when you enter a house, you say assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Or, so the long greeting, so uh, my Shaykh uh, Akram Nadwi, uh, ta'ala, he explains that hadith with the 30 rewards. He says that's not every single person. That's for people who have time. That's for when you're in a masjid and people are sitting down and they have time. You're walking in the street, you, know, you might not be getting those 30 rewards, you might be getting sin because you're making things hard for people. And you find that in some societies in the Middle East, for instance, every time you travel or you're trying to buy something or do anything, you know, there's long, prolonged introductions. Hayakallah, barakallah. The guy might be trying to rip you off, but first he has to give you long salams and greetings and and then you get to the point, how much is this? They won't get to it. They'll keep saying those greetings. So it makes things very difficult. Uh, so just keep these things in mind. Barakallahu feekum. Wa akhiru da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.